we're going to take our magnesium sulfate. And that's going to be our source of magnesium ions, and we're going to mix that with some sodium hydroxide, and that's going to be the source of our hydroxide ions. And we're going to be looking at this um, this solubility equation here. We have some magnesium hydroxide dissociating into some magnesium and hydroxide ions. If you notice the K of this one, right, KSP, KSP just solubility product, you, this is really small. Times 10 to the negative 12, really small. That means we don't really get a lot, a lot of dissociation happening. Um, but we can increase the dissociation by doing a couple things. Like how can we make this guy more soluble? Uh, if I remove a product, then I have to replace that product, and so more of the solid will have to dissociate into ions in order to, to, to make the system reach equilibrium again. So if I remove my products, I should see some more of this solid dissolving. Um, if I increase my product, right, if I add some of these, well, then I should shift the reaction towards the reactant side. So if you remove products, you want to shift towards the products and make more. If you add products, you want to shift away from the products and make more of your reactant. So in this problem, in this uh, part B, what we're really looking for is no color changes. We're looking for solid. Are you forming more solid? Are you, or is more solid dissolving? That's really what we're looking at in this and, and how we can shift that around. So remember, solid is on your reactant side. This is the equation we're looking at. So solid is on the reactant side. So if you see more solid forming, then you're shifting towards the reactants. If you see that solid dissolving and there's not much left, then you're on the product side. So how are we going to do this? The first thing we want to do is take our magnesium sulfate, um, our, our, our Epsom salts, magnesium sulfate uh, heptahydrate. That's our, our Epsom salts. So you're going to need those. Measure out 1.3 grams of that and dissolve it in 50 mils of water. And then we want to find that solution, so the, the concentration, the, the molar concentration of that solution. So that's the very first thing that you have to do on here. And this is like a throwback to Chem 1. If <laughs> you remember Chem 1, finding molarity again. What is molarity? Molarity is just the moles uh, over the liters. So I already know the liters, right? I, I had 50 mils, so that's 0.05 liters. But how do I find that molar? Uh, how do I find the moles? Moles. Right, so I have 1.3 grams of this, of the MgSO4.7 waters. That just means that I have seven waters attached to this. So if I know the molar mass of water, I can just multiply that by seven and add it to the molar mass of magnesium sulfate. So uh, go ahead and look all that up in the periodic table. Um, you need the molar mass. I'm going to do that grams per one mole. That's how I get the grams. So find the molar mass of this thing. Seven times water plus magnesium plus sulfate. All right, so that's the first part. Find that molar concentration. And then what we're going to do is start adding, uh, so you make that solution up, and then you're going to start adding, you know, sodium hydroxide and then an HCl to, to these solutions. So how does that affect things? What are we looking for? Change in solubility. What change in solubility do you observe? That question is just asking you, um, did solid form or did more of the solid dissociate? Did, did it dissolve in, in um, its associated ions? So what's happening here? If I am adding hydroxide, I'm increasing this concentration, right? I'm going to increase my product concentration. If I increase the product concentration, what happens? Do I shift towards the reactant side? Do I make more products? What am I? What's going to happen here? Um, should I see a solid forming, or should I see more of it dis dissociating, more of it dissolving, that solid disappearing? Um, so if you see more solid forming, then you shifted towards the reactants. If you see that solid dissolving, then you shifted towards the products. So what do you think is going to happen if you add a product? Now, this part seven here is a little bit trickier because remember, you have to remember that relationship between um, the H plus and the OH minus, uh, right? So this equals 1.0 times 10 to the negative 14. I may have used hyd hydronium before. H3O plus and H plus are the same thing. We'll learn more about that when we get to chapter 16. But if I increase one of these, I have to decrease the other. So if I'm... In Part seven, if I'm increasing the H plus concentration, that's the same as lowering the OH concentration. So if I lower that OH concentration, what's happening here? If this is, is lowering, then am I going to shift to the products to make more of it? Or am I going to shift towards the reactants to make more solid? So what's happening uh, in that in part, uh, the next part, uh, when I when I add that H, H3O plus? So I'm going to add H plus, H, I'm going to add hydroxide. It's going to shift one side. I'm going to add hydronium. It's going to shift to the other side, or H plus, and it's going to shift to the other side. So those are the observations that you're looking for. Did I see more solid? Um, did I not see more solid? Did more of it form? You're not going to see any real color changes here. That's part B.